As YouTubers, we talk about a lot of different radios. But what do we actually carry? Stick around and we'll get right to it. As YouTubers, we get to test and review a lot of different radios. But which radio, HT specifically, do we carry into the field? Well, I thought it would be kind of fun while we were at the Huntsville Ham Fest to ask all of the YouTubers, or at least several of them, what kind of radio they had, what they liked about it, and what they didn't. And then if you stick around to the very end of this video, I'll show you the three radios that I carried with me and why I chose those specific three. Hey, how's it going? This is Bill, Kilo Zero WHW. Today I'm carrying the Kenwood D74. Yes, the older model. I don't see any reason to step up. I don't need the new features. What I like about this radio is first of all, it's Kenwood, so it's a good quality build, the radio. Uh, the power modes are, go it goes all the way from high to extra low. Um, and I like the fact that with this radio, you can monitor other bands other than just 220, 440. And I just like this radio. And what I don't like, the battery life. Uh, with this D74, Guac and APRS, which is, that's another thing I like about it. It does APRS, but Squawk and APRS, this battery won't do the trick. Mike K at MRD, I am carrying the ICOM ID50. I love this radio. It's durable. It charges with USB-C and programs. You can also charge it with 12 volts. I love everything about it. It's got ICOM's very familiar and easy to use menu structure. Oh, and the battery lasts for days. I have dropped this on gravel, in the sand, in the dirt. It's waterproof, you can throw it in the pool, you're not gonna hurt it. The only thing that I don't like about it, when you hit the quick menu here, you can, you can change the, uh, you, can put, you can turn the tone on and off, but you can't change the tone frequency, the PL tone. You gotta go all the way in the settings to do that. But other than that, this thing is 100% K at MRD proof. Tank radio here. I my uh, HT radio is the Anytone the HT eight seven eight seven eight UV. One of those you'll figure it out. Um, what I do like about it is DMR and it also has high power. So on two meter, I transmit up to seven watts. Unfortunately, you only get the five watts on seven centimeter even on the high power mode. What I don't like about it is it's um, the battery. The battery life, the original battery wasn't that great. I did replace it with a battery I got from Bridgecom. It has that USB charger, the USB-C right there. Yeah, you don't have to carry a cradle anymore. And of course, you gotta replace that rubber duck antenna and I got the signal stick. Hey, I'm Jim from FEP Labs Radio, WT1W. This is the Yaesu FT5D and I love this radio because you can program it from the keyboard and know what you're doing with it. What I don't love about it is that sending an APRS text message on this requires three degrees in nuclear physics, engineering, and witchcraft. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. My friend Jason asked me what radio I am carrying, and this is the Radiodity GA-5WB, which you can't get anymore. You gotta get the Vero VRN76. And I like this radio because it is Bluetooth and it has a cell phone app and I can do APRS iGate, DigiPeat, program repeaters, and do all of my talking through my phone, through my Bluetooth headset, or I can do it all from the radio itself. This thing is like a Swiss Army knife of cheap radio and it's about, I don't know, I wanna say about 200 bucks. So that's why I like this one. But I like to play with all radios. So catch me next week, we'll find a different radio. What do you dislike? Uh, what do I dislike? Um, it's going to be kind of a whiny little thing, but the USB-C charging, which most radios don't have, is charging the battery, and th when I have done it, I can't see the fuel gauge go up. I have to turn the radio off, turn it back on after it's charged, and then it'll say 100%, but it's a really small thing. Um, outside of that, it radios. It does the thing. All right, Jason, KC5HWB. Uh, this is the Anytone ATD878UV2+. It's quite a long model number. But this is the one that I normally pick up when I just, when I'm going places, when I'm in the truck and I need to take an HT with me, I take this with me. I really like the fact it has an extended battery that is USB-C rechargeable. It's got a nice big color screen on it. And it's, um, you know, and the battery life is, lasts a long time because it is so large. It holds something like 3,000 channels or something like that. I don't have it anywhere near that much filled up on it. But 
I guess if I had to say anything that I disliked about it, it is a bit challenging to program. It's not your traditional type of menu system since it is a DMR radio. And honestly, most of the time I use this for analog. Um, but it is a DMR radio, so the, challenge, the programming on it, which you can totally do from the front panel, you don't have to have a computer, but it's, it's a different type of system to get the frequency in there and get the offset and get the PL tone and everything like that. So if you're used to a traditionally programmed from the front panel radio, like, like a Baofeng or a Waxon or even like an ICOM radio, then this is going to be a different story on that. So once you get over that hurdle, it's not so bad, but I really like that one because of the screen. Uh, the size of it, and uh, the battery life. I'm Lou, K4H&H. &H. My YouTube channel is Hiking and Hammond, or we can just go, Hiking and Hammond Radio! Anyway, uh, I'm using today the FT5DR, the Yaesu. Um, what do I like about it? I like that it's compact, and the battery life is pretty decent. Um, I really like the fact that it uses APRS, which is why I got this specifically, so that I could very easily ping with a minimum amount of equipment APRS and APRS message when I'm out hiking on the trail and Pink and I use these to stay in touch with each other when we get separated on the trail. What I don't like is sometimes I will bump the touch screen and also I need to remember to go back and change the buttons so that I'm not switching off frequency but you can flip these in the menu settings so that the top is not frequency it's volume and the bottom one which is a little stiffer is your frequency change or your memory change. So that's what I love and like and don't like about the FT5DR. Hey guys, it's uh, Gaston, the tech prepper, KT7RUN. Uh, VX6R has been my go-to trail radio. I've done about 10,000 trail miles on this thing. It's wideband receive. Love the battery tray for AA, direct DC charging. But the only thing I don't like is the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. A little bit of a pain, but uh, with this thing Mars modded, I get four bands on it. So yeah, VX6R is absolutely the trail radio for me. How's it going everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I'm rental traveling to Huntsville Ham Fest and I am carrying a Kenwood TH D75 that I have connected via BNC to a signal stuff signal stick mag mount with a signal stick on top of it so I can just quick disconnect and get right back to whichever antenna I'm using. The TH D75 much like the 74 and the 72 have a TNC built in it's got Bluetooth, so I can connect with my phone, and I can do Windlink things, as well as it just being a good all-around APRS, fully capable radio. Of course, the only downside is when you're packing that many features, you deplete the battery pretty quickly. There is a firmware update that I have not performed yet on this radio, so I can't say that things have improved or not, but at the same time, it is USB-C, so you can at least keep it charged when you're in your car or running around somewhere. Now, let's talk about the three radios that I carried on this adventure. First up is the D75, and I carried this for one specific reason. I wanted to know how the DigiPeat function worked and how it performed on this radio. Up on Montecito Mountain, you can't get into the local DigiPeter with an HT in the campground. So, last year I started putting up a DigiPeter and wanted to continue that this year to provide good APRS coverage for everyone walking around with one of these HTs. Now, you've heard me complain about battery life in the past. I didn't have to worry about the battery this go around because I simply used the DC barrel uh, connection port here on the side, plugged it into the RV batteries, and it ran without any issues whatsoever the entire weekend. And once I figured out the DigiPeter, it worked flawlessly. The next radio I chose was the Yezu FT5. And specifically, I chose this radio for its APRS capabilities. I wanted to be able to do position reporting. And more importantly, I wanted to be able to do messaging while we were in Huntsville for the fest. This radio I've been carrying for probably two, maybe three years now. I absolutely love this radio. The only thing I don't like about it is you can't access the TNC in this radio with a computer or a phone the way you can the D75. So that's the biggest drawback with the FT5. But if I don't plan to connect a computer to my HT that particular day, I don't really worry about it. So the FT5 was my other uh, choice radio. Now the last one in the list is the VX6. I've had this radio for probably, let's see, I think I bought this in March of 2024, so about six or seven months so far right now. This is a brilliant little radio. 
Uh, I have Mars Mod in mine, so I do get the six bands out of it. The main reason I carry this is the YouTube guys wanted to use 220 to communicate during the show on Saturday. And the only other 220 radio I have uh, at my disposal is the D75. I knew it would be in use as the DigiPeter, and I didn't want to take it down just to use that HT uh, during the show. So that's where the VX6 uh, came in clutch for me. The only thing I really don't like about this radio, and I understand why it's there, I don't like that threaded audio connector uh, on the top. It's there to keep it waterproof, but it makes it a real pain in the rear end if you do want to connect something like a DigiRig to it. So typically, I won't use that radio for digital communications just because of that connector. If I need it, I can use it, but it's just a bit aggravating. So there's a look at what everybody carried. There's a look at what I carried and why. And I hope you found today's information useful. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.